for the obvious. Uh, final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 17435 in the name of Maurice Corrie on Unforgotten Forces Consortium. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons down. I call on Maurice Corrie to open the debate. Mr Corrie, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. Uh, can I first of all declare that I am I'm actually uh, an Armed Forces veteran and also can I say I'm very grateful to those who stayed on after a fairly long session this afternoon in the Chamber uh, for what really is a very pertinent debate on our uh, Armed Forces. It is indeed an honour to open this member's business this evening and to speak of the amazing work of the Unforgotten Forces uh, Consortium. When a person leaves the Armed Forces, they are leaving behind what feels like family. But often what can be most overwhelming are the burdens that they take with them when they return to so-called normal life. Of course, most, victorin, victor, most veterans transition well back into their communities, but whether experiencing physical injuries, loneliness, or mental health issues, others require services which offer extra support. And in Scotland, we are so fortunate to have a multitude of charities and organizations which stand ready to help veterans improve their quality of life. And this help is necessary. More than half of the veterans live with a disability or long-term health condition. Knowing who they can turn to can be the biggest step forward in receiving advice and support. And over time, our response has become more attuned to the layered nature of support these veterans can require. For example, if a veteran is struggling with a problem, it is rare that this is the only challenge they face, whether big or small. For instance, an older veteran with hearing loss could also struggle with social isolation and, and a lack of daily interaction. And with the Unforgotten Forces Consortium, we can see one of the greatest examples of how an incredibly collaborative and cooperative response truly serves Scotland's older veterans. It connects both private and third sectors to offer veterans a wealth of support to tackle these issues. This consortium, established in July 2017, is a strong partnership between 16 organizations, both military and civilian, all of which are geared towards helping older veterans tackle their different needs. Kickstarted with a £4 million granted through the Age Veterans Fund, it has been given the task of delivering a three-year program to support those veterans aged 65 and over, as well as their families across Scotland. With one year to go in its current phase, it is clear to me, as it should be to all of us here tonight, that future funding for this project would be an investment in the quality of life for our older veterans. Put simply, it aims to increase the support that is available for these veterans. And as a whole, the project seeks to provide both new and enhanced services covering health and well-being, social isolation, advice, practical help, and arts engagement for older veterans. Simply listing some of the members of the consortium exhibits the range and sheer depth of their expertise, such as Poppy Scotland, Age Scotland, the Defence Medical Welfare Service, the Scottish Older Pers People's Assembly, Fairs for All, founded by David Gibson, who I believe is here today in the public gallery, the RF Association, Luminate, Music in Hospitals and Care Scotland, Action on Hearing Loss, SAFA, the Armed Forces Charity, Citizens Advice Scotland, Erskine, ILM Highland, Scottish War Blinded, Legion Scotland, and the University of Western Scotland. These partners offer a complementary mix of emotional and factual support, which means that together they capture the entire well-being of the veteran. In promoting the interconnected collaboration through par referral pathways, the consortium has made the best use of the charitable provision that already exists here in Scotland. And of course, today, I can only provide a flavor of the work of these charities as much as I wish I could cover them all and highlight a few samples now. The Defence Medical Welfare Service, whom I've had the pleasure of working with on several occasions, offers both emotional and practical services along healthcare pathways. By liaising with their partners, they encourage referrals to local support services, which in turn helps veterans in their recovery and overall well-being. Moreover, Poppy Scotland, which leads the consortium, offers assistance and practical guidance to veterans and their families, as well as those still serving the armed forces. Since 2017, they have aimed to alleviate feelings of loneliness and isolation amongst older veterans by offering a breakaway service. This provides bespoke holiday packages for older veterans and their families. Indeed, I have read of trips ranging from London to the Highlands and even to Jersey. And furthermore, I could not speak more highly of the Erskine Activity Centre, which I very much enjoyed visiting last year in my own region, for older veterans based across Renfrewshire, East Renfrewshire, Inverclyde, East and West and Bartonshire, Erskine provides there the opportunity to try out a variety of daily activities and offering workshops in woodwork, music, computing, amongst others. These classes are a wonderful way of reducing loneliness and introducing older veterans to new skills they perhaps never realized they had. 
but in this way, the 16 organizations in the consortium function as a collaborative group that really highlights their effectiveness and shared purpose. And the benefits to the ungotten, Unforgotten Forces project are immense and far-reaching. Its partnered cooperation means that veterans and their families face far less confusion and bewilderment when approaching an organization for help. And by taking the burden off their shoulders and sharing it across appropriate partners, this goes a long way to relieve the stress of being unsure who to turn to. And in approaching one organization, one is in effect reaching out to all the partner organizations. And its impact is absolutely clear. In its first 21 months, the consortium has provided 7,300 episodes of support to our older veterans, which is incredible. At the heart of this success is the efficiency and the effectiveness of its referral pathway. And this close link approach allows staff within its organi these organizations to connect with each other, both at the national management level and at local grassroots level. And as Glenn, Glenn MacDonald, Poppy Scotland's Unforgotten Forces Coordinator said, it is a force multiplier. So, we see that this project has opened wide doors for conversation between these partners. They can more easily and readily discuss the best ways to provide a veteran support network. They can trade experiences and indeed expert and expertise to find uh, the right solution for each veteran's case. And quite rightly, the work and impact of the consortium has been met with the appreciative accommodation it deserves. In April of this year, the group won the 2019 Soldiering On Award in, working to, in the Working Together character, uh, category for being a great example in its cooperative referrals. Surely accolades such as this speak of the need for ungotten forces, ungot unforgotten forces funding to be continued before June 2020. And the combined efforts of our partners and its partners show its good work deserves to be secured for the, for for the future. And it will be a disservice to Scotland's older veterans if these enhanced services were limited in what they could offer. For this reason, I do hope that both the Scottish and UK governments will work closely with the consortium to determine the funding op options available. And to conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, the impact of the Unforgotten Forces project is clear. For those older veterans who need guidance and help, this consortium stands ready to come alongside and direct them to the right port of call. This approach seeks to capture both the mental and physical well-being of the veteran. With its current program set to expire next year, it is very important that the funding which this consortium relies upon is continued. And we have to secure the future, both of the Unforgotten Forces Partnership and the veterans they serve. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Corey. Now, before I call uh, Richard Lyle, you perhaps have noticed, perhaps not, that the minute and second hand clock can't operate after five o'clock. Don't ask me why, it's technological. They put men on the moon, but we can't do clocks. So you'll have to, <laughs> you'll have to measure yourself in real time, you see? So it's 1913 military time just now. Um, so you just have to, no, thank you, Mr. Lyle, don't need your comments. So I'm asking you to pay attention to that clock and you will be the exemplar of this. Mr. Lyle, followed by Mr. Mountain. Yes, yeah, so I actually was going to ask what, how the clock had stopped. And thank you, President Officer. I thank uh, Maurice Corey for bringing this debate to the Chamber. I welcome the opportunity to contribute to this important debate on particular Scottish War Blinded and uh, Unforgotten Forces Consortium. I'd like to thank Richard Baker for his illuminating briefing that highlighted the work undertaken by the Scottish War Blinded in its role as part of the Unforgotten Forces Consortium. Making this contribution this evening is a very personal thing for me. My support for Maurice Corrie's motion, of course, comes from a general sense of social responsibility, but the subject also touches on my own life, both personal and professional. Like most, my family had a long history of service in the Scottish Armed Forces. Indeed, my grandfather was a sergeant in the army during the First World War, and my father was in the Royal Air Force during the Second World War. Two generations of my fa uh, family serving my country, preserving our way of life for us, my children, and my grandchildren. As a young boy, I myself se served in the 2166 Hamilton Squadron of the Air Training Corps. That will surprise many people. That experience helped shape the man I am today and gave me a, a small insight into what actually takes part in the, the forces, in other words, what a person must be uh, prepared to give. That's why during my time as a local councillor, I made servicemen and women my priority. I pressed and eventually uh, worked with North Lancashire Council to make sure that servicemen and women in my constituency were not put to an unfair disadvantage because of their service. We changed the rules to ensure that their housing application dates were inclusive of the time that was spent in the service 
of their country. They fought for us, so we should fight for them. Therefore, perhaps more than ever in these days, the work that charities like Unforgotten uh, Soldiers Consortium are doing for our veterans is crucial. In its short 18-month life, the consortium, which is made up of 15 separate charitable organisations, has collaborated seamlessly, touching the lives of numerous veterans, families, in many different ways, meeting their individual needs through pooling of ideas and resources. This success has been recognised by the Soldiering On Awards, for which I offer them my congratulations. It is heartening to think of a charity will achieve in the future when considering what it already has managed to achieve in its short time frame. As its name suggests, Scottish War Blinded worked tireless in the particular role supporting veterans who have suffer, suffered sight loss as a result of injuries sustained while in action. In their activities as part of the consortium, they have been working alongside AIDS Scotland, action on hearing loss to improve the lives of hearing and sight impaired veterans, a significant group when it, one considers the research has found a casual link between PD, PTSD and sight loss. The key to providing proper support in early intervention, subgroup of consortium therefore been devising mechanisms to ensure that those needs spe specifically due to sight or hearing loss are identified as early as at a stage. They are working to raise awareness among veterans in Scotland, not only in the services they offer, but also in the need to ensure they get themselves screened. As such, they hope to aid the provision of veteran screening, encourage medical practitioners in issuing certificates of visual impairment to ask their patients if they have served in the armed forces as a matter of course. I am proud to say that the Scottish Government has shown great support to this outstanding organisation and through its continued commitment demonstrates its gratitude and admiration for those who have served its country. And I don't know how much time I've got left, President Officer. Minute, minute and a half, okay. One of the few things that all the members of this uh, parliament can agree on is that our veterans deserve to be cared for. Given the contribution and the sacrifices that they and their families have made on their behalf. Cross-party group and armed forces, veterans community uh, demonstrates that the common will that exists across this chamber to meet those needs. And I compliment uh, the past members and uh, the present members for the work that they do. Consortium has been building from the UK's government's veteran strategy. In order to help them develop that st strategy, Works for Scotland, CPG, the Scottish Government more generally have been meeting, discussing the needs, ideas, concerns and hope for the future of the consortium members and for the veterans and the families. And it is in this spirit, therefore, that I offer my unreserved and ongoing support to this motion and to the work of the Unforgotten Forces Consortium and thank Maurice Corey for bringing this motion to the Chamber. Thank you very much, Mr. Lyle. I call Edward Mountain to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Mr. Mountain, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It's always great to know that you're always going to be under four minutes and uh, you're never going to be able to give me too much of a hard time. But at the outside, I'd like to declare that, uh, that I have an interest in this, in that I am also, like Maurice Curry, officially a veteran. I'd like to thank my colleague, Maurice Curry, for securing this important debate, which recognises the achievements of the Unforgotten unf Forces Consortium and calls on both the UK and Scottish governments to review future funding options to guarantee this project for the long term. Let me set out why I think securing that funding is vital for our veterans. Since the Unforgotten Forces project launched in the summer of 2017, it has provided over 6,000 instances of support for veterans across Scotland, including free transport for essential travel, social support to counter loneliness, and to help with hearing loss. And I'm delighted this project has won the Working Together Award at the 2019 Soldiering On Awards. That was award was thoroughly deserved. <clears throat> Unforgotten Forces have helped so many veterans live a full and satisfying life, and that should be reason enough for the Scottish Government to secure long-term funding for this project. I've seen the work of the Unforgotten Forces at first hand in the Highlands and Islands region. I was delighted to attend the launch of the Hearing Forces in Fort George last summer. This service aims to help veterans with their families and carers with hearing loss or tinnitus. It's a condition that affects many ex-servicemen. Looking back to the day when I joined the army, we weren't issued with hearing aids. And I know from firing small arms and tank guns has affected my hearing and I also suffer from tinnitus. I therefore have huge sympathy with those in the same boat, especially those who struggle to, find, to adjust to living with hearing aids. 
That's why the work of hearing forces is so important. This service provides support for both before and after the hearing aids have been fitting, fitted, giving veterans the help they need to get used to the hearing aids. There were too many veterans who put their hearing aids in a drawer because they couldn't come to terms with the extra noise that they created. And I'd also like to pay tribute to the ILM Highland who operate the Highland Veterans Handyman Service as part of the Unforgotten Forces project. This service helps veterans with odd jobs and small repairs around the home, which some find very difficult due to disability or and limited mobility. Before I finish, signing officer, how can I not mention the work of Poppy Scotland, the lead partner in the Unforgotten Forces Consortium, and last year they raised over £2 million from their Poppy Appeal to help veterans and their families. Every year I am proud to wear the Poppy, not just in remembrance of First World War uh, losses, but also in recognition of every conflict since, in which our servicemen and women have sacrificed so much to defend this country. Presiding officer, the Unforgotten Forces Consortium makes a massive contribution to improving the quality of lives of veterans. I look forward to the Minister setting out what support the Scottish Government commit, can commit to, so the, the Unforgotten Forces Consortium can continue its vital work for veterans, especially those in the Highlands and Islands and across all of Scotland. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Mout, and I call Jackie Bailey. Ms Bailey, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I start by thanking Maurice Corey for bringing this debate to the Chamber and indeed for all his work as convener of the Cross-Party Group on Armed Forces and Veterans. We had a very interesting presentation about the Unforgotten Forces Consortium at the last CPG. Um, can I start, Presiding Officer, by, by talking about the Scottish Veterans Commissioner, Charlie Wallace, because he recently released a report that tracked the progress of the Scottish Government in reaching the target set by his predecessor. He stated that the areas of veterans care that need most improvement are predominantly in the areas where a joined-up approach to thinking and delivery is required, often across a number of bodies. The work of the Unforgotten Forces Consortium since their establishment in October 2017 provides a shining example of the benefits that just such a cooperative approach across a number of bodies actually provides. Over halfway through the overall project, the consortium has so far recorded, I think, 7,200, 7,300, according to Morris um, Corey, instances of helping older veterans. It was good to see the consortium recognised for the success of their collaborative approach by winning the Forces in Mind Trust Working Together Award. They were also shortlisted for the Best Pi Pioneering Project category at the recent SCVO Charity Awards. Examples of the help that the consortium provides to veterans aged 65 and over include free transport for essential travel, advice about keeping their homes warm in winter, help with hearing loss, as we've heard from other members, practical and emotional support before and after discharge from hospital, and social support to counter loneliness. Practical support provided by the consortium to veterans and their families is helping to improve their everyday lives. The minister rightly advocates a holistic approach to the support of veterans. I agree with him. The, the consortium's work has consistently provided that positive example of the benefits of just such a holistic approach to veterans care. The 16 bodies that have come together to work so effectively to support Scotland's veterans is something that we should celebrate. The project has proved to be a resounding success so far, and I'm not going to name all 16 of them as Maurice Corrie did, but I do want to congratulate some of them. Poppy Scotland is the lead agency. Age Scotland, the Legion, Erskine, Scottish War Blinded, the University of the West of Scotland, and many more besides. Because what they've done has been innovative, but has been so important to the lived experience of our veterans. Now, as things currently stand, the consortium is funded to the end of June 2020. That's not too far away. But after that, the future of the consortium is unclear. So the question, therefore, is what next? Where can the consortium go from here? Can it improve further? Can the consortium scope possibly be expanded to provide support to a wider range of veterans? It would be a mistake to lose the valuable services provided. The consortium has been such a positive example 
of supporting veterans through collaboration that it would be a travesty if it did not continue. Not only should the consortium continue to receive funding, but there is actually a strong case to be made that the funding should be increased in order to build on its success. At the very least, presiding officer, continuing to fund the consortium would provide a resounding statement of support for just this kind of collaborative approach, ensuring that they can continue to have a positive impact on veterans' lives is vitally important. Presiding officer, the Veterans Commissioner, the government, the third sector are all in agreement that collaboration and cooperation are critical aspects of improving support for veterans. I hope the Minister will not just welcome what they've done so far, but the Minister will draw together a group of key people to drive forward access to funding so that the work of the Unforgotten Forces Consortium continues for many, many years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Bailey. And I call on Graham Day to close the government. Minister, please. Presiding officer, let me begin by congratulating Maurice Corrie on bringing forward this motion for debate and members for their input to it. As ever with deliberations on our armed forces and veterans community, the tone and the approach has reflected the cross-party consensus which exists in this chamber, where I think we share a common purpose in wanting the best for those who have served their country and, indeed, their families. Veterans are a great asset to our communities, and it's important to recognise that the vast, the overwhelming majority of people leaving the military go on to lead highly productive lives. But as we know, there are a number who struggle immediately post-service, others for whom issues emerge several years down the line, and then our older veterans who experience age-related issues. And collectively, we owe them the best support we can provide. Collectively, that is as government, local as well as national, and of course working in partnership with an effective and highly regarded third sector. Here in Scotland, we have an extremely committed and close-knit set of veterans' charities, and I'm constantly impressed with the work they do day to day to make a difference to the lives of our veterans and their families. The Unforgotten Forces Consortium, which also encompasses several non-military charities, is a great example of this. Uh, particularly in regard to our more aged veterans. One of the most striking things I've found in engaging with charities in this area is the duty of care they feel for those who approach them for assistance. If they cannot provide the help being sought, then they don't just point the veteran in another direction. I've seen for myself countless examples of charities personally guiding people, taking them through what can be a frustrating process to ensure this, they source what they require by way of help. Both I and the Minister for Older People and Equalities have had the pleasure of meeting with Unforgotten Forces this year to learn about their work. I first met them in January in Ayrshire and then again when addressing their annual conference in Stirling in April. In both cases, it was great to hear about the good work they've been undertaking and to discuss with them how the Scottish Government can support the veteran sector. Now, we know that the overall population in Scotland is an ageing and those who need help now present with far more complex needs and our veterans community are not exempt from this. By bringing this group of charities together, some of whom are in the gallery tonight, Unforgotten Forces is able to provide seamless support for our veterans across a range of needs, whilst making greater use of available funds through, for example, improving signposting, better cross-referrals between organisations, and cutting down on duplication. In particular, their emphasis on ensuring that those seeking help need to tell their story only once has been welcomed by veterans who want as hassle-free a pathway to support as is possible. Their efforts in supporting our veterans community very much parallel what we in the Scottish Government are doing more widely across uh, Unforgotten Forces' three themes of physical well-being, sensory impairment and social isolation and loneliness. For example, in our efforts to support older people's physical well-being, the Government has provided nearly £1.7 million to the Care Inspectorate over the past few years to expand the successful Care About Physical Activity programme to reach more areas of Scotland. The programme provides practical support and encouragement to care staff in building physical activity into daily activities and routines of those in care. I know that older veterans who have participated in the programme have benefited greatly and that ex-servicemen are also helping bring their knowledge and expertise by leading activities in care settings. To support those veterans who find their eyesight failing in later years, we've been working with partners to update the guidance for the Certificate of Visual Impairment. In the coming months, it will include asking whether an individual has served in the forces, including as reservists. If they have, it will signpost the patient to information about Scottish war blinded who are able to offer services and lifetime support, irrespective of whether the condition is directly attributable to their time in the services. 
Another key part of our work across government is driving progress to combat social isolation and loneliness throughout Scotland. We published our strategy on social isolation in December last year. Um, we recognise that this can be an issue for some veterans, in particular coming from a community that has historically emphasised self-help. That is why the Scottish Government has also funded organisations through the Veterans Fund to help our elderly veterans have an active social life long into their old age. Unforgotten Forces Partners Fairs for Free would be an example of this. In terms of future funding, my ministerial colleagues and I are currently considering how we can support the veterans sector beyond 2020. President Officer, like Mr Corrie, I note calls for the UK and Scottish governments to work with the consortium to review future funding options in order that it can continue its innovative and successful work beyond its current funding term. And let me begin, uh, finish as I began on a note of consensus. As I indicated a moment ago, the Scottish ministers are presently considering how we support the veterans sector in the years ahead. But also I know that the consortium are looking actively at how they make their model sustainable and looking at a range of ways in which this can be done. However, Mr Corrie's motion is right to note calls for input from the UK Government too. The UK Government supported the establishment of this model through LIBOR funding, which is coming to an end, as we've heard, next year. And there is clearly a question about, following this initial commitment to begin the work, what support there will be available post-LIBOR from well Westminster also. For our part, the Scottish Government is happy to work with the consortium to review funding options to help ensure it has a sustainable future, because it has certainly proven its worth. Presiding officer. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament. <laughs>